All right, good afternoon. Thought it'd be good for you guys to hear a little bit from the coordinators. Um, just they, uh, they always got a little different take or different way of uh, not spinning things, but uh, explaining things. And I think uh, that's good for everyone. I appreciate all of that you do uh, to, to share our program out there, send the message out and uh, looking forward to spring. Uh, guys started classes today and uh, we got a chance to get back after being on spring break. Um, we start Wednesday and uh, you know, our format I think it's a little different than it has been in the past. It's five weeks, kind of three practices per week. There is one week where we go four, where there's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. But uh, it really allows us to go, you know, to spread our hours out where we can, you know, practice one day, um, kind of go off the film the next and lift, practice the next and install. Uh, same thing, you know, following. Uh, and so I think those five weeks are, are good to spread out, especially when we're installing our new systems and uh, trying to teach. So... Any questions? Coach, uh, Brian was asked about Jackson Kirkland. What's, what's his status? Yep. Um, with, with Jackson, he's enrolled in school. And um, we have filed a waiver, and we have not you know, heard back on that. So um, that's the status, and that's really all there is to, to update right now. So. What's the timeline on stuff like that? Yeah, I was hoping that would already be uh, something that we'd know on. But um, you know, we'll just uh, continue to, to wait. Could you write out the injuries? Yeah, yep. And I know uh, um, I'm just going to mainly talk about the guys that I know will be out for the spring. Um, uh, Coach Grubb talked, I think, already about Cam Davis and Richard Newton. Um, we will have a uh, um, fairly pretty good chance. We'll know here in the next couple of days, but pretty good chance that a Mecca will be out for um, the spring um, with the injury he's still trying to come back from. And um, um, I'm going through the offensive guys here first. Um, there'll be a couple guys that uh, will not will just be limited, so you won't see them in contact drills, and that would be uh, Sam Adams and uh, Jabez. And then Eddie will be out for the spring as well on defense. Um, he will he will miss some games. Um, you know we hope to have him. You know for uh, a part of the season. You know I know he's determined to uh, push through. And um, you know you guys know Eddie is uh, as well as I do. Um, you know he's a determined guy and uh, motivated, always upbeat. And um, man, he's uh, he's attacking it. Can you talk about significant differences if there are any uh, in recruiting and of course with the portal? what you've experienced the last few years and then you come in here. Are there any changes as far as the environment or even uh, your strategies? Yeah, well, I think the timeline with COVID, right, is the, diff is the big difference between those two years. But I think we're carrying a lot of what we did and how we, um, we worked as groups and different things that I think that uh, our staff does that's unique. Um, I think Courtney Morgan does, again, a great job of being creative. Um, always just forward thinking, um, finding different ways to uh, to make contact and and uh, you know for us to get our message and for us to build relationships with the the prospects that are out there. So um, you know we're able to bring guys to campus now uh, as opposed to the previous two years where it was dead, and so that's certainly um, you know something. Uh, but I think we took a lot from you know back then. I think we attacked it uh, in a. In a very aggressive way with zoom calls you know back then and um you know taking what we learned from those times to be able to um you know uh, you know how we t we we showed our program you know we may not be doing it through zoom calls necessarily all the time right now but there's things that we did that we learned from now to continue to show our program in a positive light and for guys to understand not just okay what it looks like for them on the football field or the classroom but all the areas uh you know understanding uh, the relationships and how important that is the culture in our program you know what what a day looks like and so forth was that a new injury for Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was right away in the in the um, in the winter workouts. Yeah. How's recruiting going? I feel really good about it. I feel good about the spot we're in, um, especially with the twenty three class. You know, um, you really that's what you got to do. You know, when you come in in December, we tried to get our class, and and we're still you know we still got a couple spots uh, that uh, we could 
we could take someone in right now and that we will continue to be looking for, um, especially as we learn our roster better um, in the, uh, the next month. And uh, uh, I'm really excited about just the, uh, just the way the response is with uh, the 23 class and uh, the guys that have come to camps. I think once they get here, um, they're, it's really an eye opener for them. Um, you know, those that have never been here before, you know, a lot of it is just, of course, you know, University of Washington, the athletic facilities. Um, but I think that the guys that have been here before, um, it's really cool for them to see the vibe and um, the, uh, the culture of our program, uh, the energy that our staff has, uh, the excitement we have for the future, um, how we operate and how we work together. Um, you're getting some of those uh, things that you're, you're talking to the coordinators about. You know, and how I, I think that's just a unique thing. Um, the trust that I keep hearing uh, Chuck Morrell talk about, you know, I think that it's pretty easy to see, not just by our players, but even just in a few hours when guys come to campus for an unofficial visit. Previously, you mentioned how it's kind of difficult to re recruit some of the guys from the team. What kind of surprised you since we last spoke? Um, you last spoke to us, like, you know, timeline stuff. I asked Morrell the same question, but anything like surprised you about? Yeah, I think we're really starting to get into where it's it's us. You know, this is us. This is who we are. This is our team, you know. Um, you know, the the of course you always think about the positive things, but we're just us grinding through and we haven't faced any adversity yet. We haven't played a football game. Um, so we've talked to our guys a lot about that, that right now, you know, there's still a honeymoon period that we're going through together, you know, where we're really enjoying being around each other, but we haven't been thrown to the fire yet, you know, and so um, we're really focusing on those relationships. I think it's really paying off um, and uh, enjoying, enjoying uh, the time. I think our, co our coaches uh, really appreciate what our, you know, the, the um, just how important this is to our guys. Um, and I think our, our, our team is really understanding how hard our coaching staff works and all the thoughts that go together. And, and uh, it isn't just something where we're, okay, we're gonna throw some concepts out there, but there's an order to how we, you know, we teach in, in order to you know, what we do week after week, whether it's strength and conditioning or whether it's our installing of our systems. Um, you know, I think they see that and they recognize that you know, this is a staff that's working together and always you know, really planning ahead and working the plan. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, um, um, you know, we get into spring ball now. And actually, the excitement now is on another level because now they get to do what they really love, and that's play football. And, uh, you know, but then all of a sudden with that comes, you know, towards the end of the spring, where am I at on the depth chart? Because it starts to show itself a little bit. And, you know, those are the things where the relationships and just continue to uh, for the coaching staff to pour ourselves into these guys and continue to invest in them because there is a role for everyone on this football team, right? That we got to have all of them. We got to have all of them uh, all in, and um, you know we need them to, uh, to to buy into what we're doing. And uh, there comes a point where you know some of those things play out and it gets a little bit harder. So um, you know just that's that's why you have the staff around you that you trust and that you believe in. Um, that understands how to uh, continue to develop, how to continue to stay the course, um, continue to just uh, work those relationships. Yeah, probably a little bit of an unfair question, but before you have a practice, before you have a game, what do you think this team is really good at when you look at the roster, when you see what you're seeing in workouts and things like that? What do you kind of identify that this team is really good at? Yeah, I hope it's some of the things that uh, – you know, um, Chuck and uh, Ryan just talked about, you know, um, I'd like to think that, um, you know, at the skill spots, especially at receiver, that that's an area we'll, work, we'll excel. Um, I, I'd like to think that our offensive line, just watching the bodies move around, um, that that's an area that uh, we have some depth. You know, there's a reason why we felt like we could afford to move MJ, you know, over to defense. And uh, it's, it's uh, because we think we can he can cause a lot of havoc over there, cause some problems. Um, just because of who he is and, and the body type and how he moves, but also because, uh, you know, we feel like there's a, a lot of great contributors uh, that are, you know, there's still some youth, but there's a lot of guys that uh, we feel confident in that uh, can grow and develop and be a great offensive line for us. Uh, defensively, I think Chuck talked about, you know, the secondary, um, you know, corner uh, position, and there's some experience at safety too. And so, 
Um, I think those are the things right now, right away you, you, you look at as hopefully being strengths. Um, those are the guys, I guess, also that continue to, you know, carry just, uh, I think, a vibe about them, like uh, lead. Um, it's not something where it's fake. Uh, it's something where there's some substance to it. Um, I think a guy like AC, you know, Alex Cook, and just his maturity and just how he keeps us uh, going forward, moving, moving in a positive direction. Kind of similar note, but obviously this team struggled last season, and, and many of coaching change and everything, and, and expectations from the outside might not be that high. But I'm curious when you look at this roster and you look at who's coming back for fans. What do you think is a fair expectation for, for this team in 2022? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anything other than playing for a championship. I really don't. I, I you know, um, I don't want to go into every time when I've been at a place, but there's been a lot of times where. Um, you know, um, it, it was a four and eight team, or it was a five and seven team, or it was in a one eleven program, and uh, you know the the you know the the momentum you can gain. Um, you know, you got to catch some breaks here and there, uh, but the momentum you can gain by just continuing to stay the course, um, get an early jump, and get a good start, and it's amazing what can happen. Um, the game of football is about confidence and about uh, you know playing aggressive, and you know. Um, again, like I said, you got to catch some breaks along the way, but um, I, I don't know anything other than trying to compete for a championship when it comes to, uh, you know, going about your business. Now, um, you know, it doesn't always happen the first year, but I don't know why that, why that can't be the case for us in this, uh, in this conference. Okay, well, uh, as, you, as you establish a new system here, have these guys asked you to maintain anything? And when I, when I raise that, I mean, they have a, like a dog walk before games where they come in and the music re 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 reverberates through the stadium. And then they've always had music at practice. I'm wondering if uh, there's going to be big changes there. Um, we're getting into those things. There's things that pop up every once in a while I didn't know about. You know, uh, Justin Glenn did a nice job of kind of laying out some traditions for me, and uh, we want to carry those on, especially the ones that are longstanding, uh, the ones that have some meaning, the ones that make sense. Um, you know, so I want to I want to do those things uh, as much as possible. Um, you mentioned uh, music and practice. We'll, we'll play some. You know, we'll play some music. Uh, I think it brings good energy, especially before you come out on the field. Um, and don't mind. I don't mind that. Um, I think that there's one thing with the music. Uh, it's another way of. Uh, and I'll share this with the guys. Um, already got this on the list. I think it's one way to provide a distraction. Right? There's a lot of distractions that happen during the course of a game. You know, and uh, you know it can bring a little juice, but it's also, you know, uh, we'll keep it we'll keep it down just because we want to do a lot of teaching here. Um, we really want to be doing a lot of coaching, and um, you know, so we'll keep it down early. But when I and I feel like uh, we can turn up a little bit, I think it's also distraction. You know, some guys get too much into the music. You know, just like they would a game with the energy, right? And uh, you know, that's those are things that are those are lessons you already kind of foreshadowing some of the things and the lessons that I've taught over the years uh, with the with the te different teams I've been with. You mentioned Justin Glenn. What has he meant to you in your time? He seems like a kind of a bridge guy. He's been here for a long time. Former player. What has he meant to you personally? Yeah, he does it. He does a great job. Uh, exactly of that. Um, knowing the past and uh, knows our team. Of course, he helped me especially in December a lot. Uh, just understanding our roster and uh, helping our our our, uh, our coaching staff um, be able to probably move forward um, and figure out where we needed to uh, try to get some uh, you know some recruiting done, um, get some uh, early early I don't know fixes of the word, but uh, you know continue to uh, stay the course. Uh, what positions and so forth needed to be uh, needed to be uh, attacked in the recruiting area, but those type of things with the traditions. Um, he's been really good. He's been uh, very helpful. Um, he loves this program. You know, it's his, it's his home. And uh, he wants to continue to, see it be, continue to see it be successful. Can you tell us a little bit about managing that quarterback room? You've got three. There's going to be a ton of attention on it. Coach Grubb said, you know, equal reps. Is that going to be through the entire camp? You know, day one, last day, same amount of reps. One guy pulls ahead. You know, you tell us a little bit about managing that quarterback Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, I go over the years. Um, I, I can think back to as early as 2005. You know, it seems like every year you got two quarterbacks, and right now we're really looking at three. You know, I think that's where it gets hard is now the reps are uh, diminished um, amongst three guys. Um, that's the hard, hard part. But uh, 
I, I know this. We're just going to pour everything into trying to coach these guys up. That's just how I've always done it. And uh, it will shake itself out. And, um, you know, I think Coach Grubb said, you know, the first four practices, that's kind of the way we look at it. We just take it in steps, you know. We don't know what we'll look like after four. Not that we're making any decisions or anything like that because it could go as long as it will in the fall camp. Um, but, um, you know, I think that it just – you know, you you just continue to pour into these guys, and um, they know we're trying to develop them. Um, and you know, some of these guys got more than just one year left too. You know, so um, it's not just a short term thing; it's a long term thing. Um, Coming into the spring and then later in August, how do you balance, or is it even a challenge, uh, the fact that you've got apparent obvious competitions out there? But at the same time, you've got a very important player development job you're trying to accomplish. Maybe mm -hmm. the other. Are those things that you integrate and can do at the same time, or do you have kind of plans to accomplish those somewhat separately? Yeah, I think uh, Coach Grubb does an awesome job of just pushing um, his room, but the offense as a whole, I think we do that as well as an pr entire program. But um, he really pushes his position every single day. Um, you know, he'll get into things with quizzes and, you know, those are just some small examples. And um, then, of course, the grading and evaluation and the feedback he gives them, um, it's it's top level stuff. Um, he's very thorough. Um, he has a system and a way that we've uh, really gone about it. And in in, I mean, every throw is tracked. I mean, you know, every throw and and routes on air, every throw in seven on seven, every throw in team. I mean, you name the throw, it's tracked, it's it's evaluated, it's written down, it's documented, you know, and um, we can tell who dropped it and the ball, you know, the placement. And so um, it's very thorough. And in the end, it comes down to production. You know, I've had a guy maybe here and there over the years because it's, I mean, you know, probably happened six or seven times over the last 15 years where we've had situations where at least two quarterbacks are in competition. And I think it's just all about just continuing to just stay the course and help them focus on just themselves, not be looking over their shoulder or looking to see what the guy next to them is doing. Just focus on you. I think that's the number one message that we have for our whole team, but especially, I think, at the quarterback spot, because we all know that, you know, that's the position where one guy usually plays, you know, and it's not two or three, like at receiver, it's one guy. And um, the quarterback, obviously, is uh, the one that drives our offense. Um, it's been that, and it's important for that person to be successful. I think the hard part uh, when you're going through this, uh, kind of going back to one of the other questions, is, um, you know, when you're talking about the quarterback, the, the earlier, you know, when you when you name a quarterback, that person now can take on the identity of the of the leader of the team. It's harder for them, and we try to encourage them to do it and try to put them out there in front of the team. But it's hard when they don't know if they're the starting quarterback or not, you know, and what direction it's going. So I think that's one of the hardest pieces as you're trying to push your culture and trying to, you know, build that swagger, that confidence. That's the one piece that. Um, is held back a little bit as you're going through a competition, uh, especially at quarterback. When it comes to the QB spot, what's the, the one or two kind of like bedrock things that you need to have from a quarterback to play for you? Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it, um, skill set wise, you got to be able to throw, deliver the football, things like that. But I think there's just got to be this poise, this confidence, this playmaking piece to you. Um, you got to understand situations, moving the chains. I mean, it comes down to just putting points on the board. You know, who's moving the ball up and down the field? Who's, yeah. Whose idea was it to move Ali to defense? One guy? You know, um, I think it was just kind of some conversations that we had, probably. Um, probably even more so on the offensive side when we were looking at depth chart, you know, just being like, gosh, you know, we're here and, and you know, we're here looking at uh, the depth chart and, um, and, you know, we got this body um, and just kind of talking with the defense and maybe, uh, you know, where – where we don't have this just massive human being, right, that MJ is and the presence that he has. And I think just coordinating, that's where a staff that continues to sit in rooms and will talk back and forth. I don't know exactly where the original idea came from, but uh, I think it got thrown around more and the offense became a little bit more open to it because they understand that in the end, it's about it's about our football team. Was you know. a little surprised when this was Paul um, I think he, I don't know if he's surprised. Uh, I thought he handled it extremely well. He was open from the beginning. Um, there was no, 
like having to talk him into it. Um, I think he actually invited uh, the challenge and was excited about it. Taylor, what, what does an ideal running back look like in your system, and what are you going to need? With, obviously, this are your down some numbers, but what are you going to need from those guys uh, in that group this spring? Yeah, um, I think the ideal running back, um, and I'm good with different body types and different styles. It isn't like we got to have one because um, you're going to need a back in short yardage and need a back that, you know, um, you know, can can do different things, uh, protect and so forth. Um, I do like versatility in a running back. Uh, we use the running back a lot in the pass game. It isn't like we're just handing off inside zone to this guy, you know, and just um, these guys are going to catch a lot of balls. They're going to be putting routes out in the, you know, quickly. Uh, they're going to be matched up versus linebackers one on one. They're going to be check downs on routes where the receivers are the primary, you know, go to targets. Um, we're going to be flexing them out. And so the guys that can, you know, take on the hits and do the things that we have to have in the run game, you know, that a typical running back would do, of course, is where it starts. But in the, in the pass game, um, you know, it's it's kind of like a quarterback. A quarterback, it has to start with the ability to throw it. But anything he can do with his legs is an added bonus. That's the same thing with a running back, except the other way. You know, if he can, if he can of course, you got to be able to run. But, you know, the things he can do in the pass game uh, is, uh, is certainly going to benefit him and us as well. You mentioned culture from day one, and you've mentioned it a lot today. Do you feel that that's taken hold the way you want it? Yeah, I, th I think so. I think it's always a, an evolving thing, you know. Um, you know, um, just you try to be nitpicky on every little thing that uh, that you're going through every single day, and um, try to use everything as a, a lesson uh, learned and and move forward. You know, um, the positives. Uh, um, the responses, I think, you know, we have three goals that we're going to go through this spring. And one of them is just a one and no mindset. And so in our culture, I think these are related to the question. So that's why I'm bringing it up. One and no mindset, just moving forward. Whatever just happened, we have to learn from it. But all we can do is focus on the next thing right in front of us. And so that, I think, is the biggest deal. Because those teams that can fight through the adverse moments, those teams that can, can work through that the best and just make adversity temporary, those are the ones that are usually successful. Yes, you got to be talented and uh, you got to be, you know, together. But, um, you know, those things along with just your toughness, your menic, mental and physical toughness, I think that culture um, is so important, um, you know. Um, and mentally, right now, those are the things that we're working on. Hey, we've seen coaches that are going for a fourth and one from their own 20-yard line and then others that will mm -hmm. from the opponent's 30. How do you kind of classify yourself in that regard? Yeah, I think we're going to be aggressive. Um, I don't think we'll be um, get crazy, you know. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a feel thing. Um, you always look back, and every game, uh, you know, there's been very few times, I guess, where I've regretted, you know, the decision we've made. Um, you've you've kind of you've really maybe sometimes looked back on it and done a lot of evaluation and asked just as a staff, you know, let's talk about this. Um, but I will just say in general, um, we want to be aggressive. And, and a lot of it is, is the, you, I think you're, really, you're talking about offensively, right? Is, uh, you know, that's where a lot of those decisions go. You don't control what the decision is when you're on defense. But, um, you know, it depends on the style of team we have. Um, you know, back, uh, back in 2005 through 2009, we were super conservative that way because we had the number one defense in the country every year. And so as long as you didn't mess it up, you know, sooner or later, you're going to get the ball in a good spot, you know, and so you're going to get some short fields and you're going to win football games. And, you know, I'm probably simplifying it down a little uh, extreme, but um, that was really how it was. And I think when you get into these games now where, you know, it's so competitive and so tight, yeah, those decisions carry, they're, they're pretty heavy um, and it's a big deal. And so um, we do, we do talk through a lot of situations. We go over them uh, with our team. Um, as well on why we did that because I want them to know, um, you know, why we went for it on a fourth and eight, fourth and seven, you know, because the defense is understand, you know, they're the ones getting put out on the football field. And I think the cool thing is, is our staff, um, even just, you know, the last couple of days uh, in our meetings, um, I hear the defense talking about the positions they may be put in um, because we're going to be aggressive offensively and how they're going to be okay with it. And that the one and all mindset, the next play has got to be how they handle it, you know. And so, offensively, you know, you can't let a, a fourth down where you didn't get it impact the next time opportunity because it's a new play, it's a new chance. And so, it all goes into what the style of play is and who you have. And um, 
you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to teach our players to be aggressive, be positive thinkers. How important is it for your kids? Yeah, I think um, it, I think it's important. Um, I think it's really important. I mean, that's the the, the age that we're in right now. I mean, that's uh, that's where we're at. So um, it's a really it's a really big deal, and um, you know, um, it's uh, it's going to continue to evolve. It's continue to change. Um, what it is now is not probably what's going to be a year from now. With the roster that you've got here at Washington, if we were to take a look at what you did at Indiana, what you did at Fresno State, is the offense any different? The offense, the roster, or the style, or the the you system. The scheme you're how similar, how is it? Yeah, it will start with the exact same. I mean, you know, there's a play here and there, but it will start with the exact same install. You know, um, you know, maybe day one has a play that's swapped out for day four because of just how you see a few things, but it's the same stuff that we're putting in now. The window dressing and who's on the football field. Um, that can change, and that, that that's the way it's been the last probably 10 to 12 years for me, um, is it's the same things that we put in uh, for the most part, um, especially, um, you know, when you have the same personnel. And we have the probably the strengths and similarities of uh, what we had at Fresno last year and uh, even Indiana uh, before that. I would say the first time at Fresno, it was different. We had a lot more of focus and emphasis on tight ends and less focus and, and emphasis on the receivers uh, back in 17 and 18. How much of a leg up does Michael have being with you before? How is he what? How much of a leg up does Michael oh. have coming in? Yeah, I mean, it's naturally. Um, you don't have to rethink when you hear, when you hear a play call. Um, you're confident that you understand what it is. I think that's probably the biggest thing because it's verbiage, right? Um, it's not that the plays are different. We run four verts. They, you know, four verts has been run here forever, probably. You know, um, for a long time anyway. And uh, you know, so and maybe there's a little bit of different of a read progression um, on certain plays. Um, you know, even though it's the same play call, um, just kind of looking for different things. That's kind of the personality that the coordinator brings, I think, to to uh, to a room uh, with the quarterbacks. But um, I think you know, Michael probably trusts that when he sees a play call, he knows what it is. And you know, the other two or the rest of the guys in that room are all, you know, maybe just like thinking it through just a little bit slower. Um, but they've done a great job just diving into it. And again, Coach Grubb pushes these guys to uh, to really understand uh, in the classroom. And uh, um, now again, we got to get on the football field, and they gotta they gotta play fast and execute. You mentioned, I believe, you know, three three goals for spring, and I think one of them you said was kind of moving on. I'm, I don't think I heard. Yep. That. Yep. No. Uh, our three goals are just a one and zero mindset, and then uh, the second goal is to execute, and that's executing. Really, that's mastering our systems, um, the systems offensively, defensively, special teams, and um, you know, executing our techniques that we're teaching, whether it's tackling, ball security, uh, and then the third one is just our toughness, mentally and physically. You know, just really. Um, growing that every single day, you know, and uh, that's done in different ways. It isn't just by going out there and doing, you know, 11 on 11 drills and smash mouth every day. You know, it's uh, it's mentally and physically learning um, from what the, happened the day before. Um, physically, obviously, we'll have our times when we can really challenge each other. And uh, so those are our three goals, our three areas of emphasis, I should say. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Appreciate it.